In this lesson, I'm gonna be going over the properties of water. So it's a pretty straightforward topic and outline. We're gonna start with just the connection between water and life, then go over the chemistry of water, specifically what polarity means and about hydrogen bonds. And then we will actually get into the different properties of water one by one and go through them. For these notes, you can pause at each slide and fill in the guided notes found in the description below, or you can watch this video straight through to have a better understanding of water. So I make videos about biology, which is the study of life. So you might be wondering, why do I need to know about water in a biology class? So even though water is abiotic, meaning non-living, it is required by all living organisms. So without water, there wouldn't be life and there wouldn't be biology. So I show some ecosystems here. There's so much life in our aquatic ecosystems that are all made of water. And then we all need water to survive, plants and animals. So there's going to be some form of water in all ecosystems, even our deserts are going to have plants that are able to store water and animals that are adapted to store it. So we're going to have a lot of connections to why the properties of water help us live. So let's now transition and talk about the chemical makeup of water to better understand these properties. So most people know that water is H2O meaning that water has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Now, atoms are composed of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Electrons have a negative charge, and in water, the electrons of our hydrogens and oxygens are not distributed evenly. The electrons tend to prefer oxygen, giving oxygen a partial negative charge and leaving our hydrogens with partial positive charges. So they're slightly negative on one side and slightly, neg uh, slightly positive on the other side. So we call this being a polar molecule. We have the poles of the earth, our opposite ends of the earth, and that's what polar means, opposites. So since we have two opposite charges on either side of a water molecule, we call this molecule polar. And this is really important to water's versatility in, in what it does and its properties to, to allow life where water is. So one of the things that we see from this polarity is the ability for water molecules to form bonds. So these bonds are called hydrogen bonds. So due to this polarity, we're going to have hydrogen bonds. These are forming between the positive hydrogens on one molecule and the negative oxygens on a different molecule. These are fairly weak bonds, but one water molecule can form up to four hydrogen bonds with other water molecules, giving us this interconnected substance when we have all the water molecules coming together. Now, both polarity and the ability to form hydrogen bonds really form the basis for the pr properties of water that I'm going to go over. So let's start with what I think is kind of the foundational property of water, and it's actually two properties, the ability for cohesion and adhesion. Cohesion is the attraction of one water molecule to another water molecule. And this is due to that hydrogen bonding. So water molecules are almost in a sense sticky. They like to stick together. If you've ever woken up really early and seen dew on plants, or you've been drinking a cold glass of water on a hot day and see the water droplets on the glass or even rain on a window, you can see that water kind of forms these droplets. And if these droplets slide next to each other, they don't bounce off of each other or just sprawl out. They actually connect and make a bigger water droplet. And that's the idea of cohesion. Water sticks together and is attracted to itself. Adhesion is when we're attracting water molecules to other molecules. 
And this is going to be due to water's polarity. The fact that it has both a positive and negative charge allows it to adhere to other surfaces. So here I show the water droplet holding hands with a leaf. And so we know that water can adhere to the surface of plants but it can also adhere to the surface of skin, the surface of glass. Water has the ability to stick, essentially, to other uh, substances. And so cohesion and adhesion, this property of water is really important um, and sets the groundwork for some other properties. And the one that I think it relates to the most is this next one called capillary action. So capillary action is defined as the ability water has to flow through a solid substance using cohesion and adhesion. So the biggest example and how it's very important in living organisms is how water is able to travel from the roots of a plant to the rest of the plant going against gravity. Since roots are at the bottom and that's where water is collected, the water has to essentially climb up the plant to get to the leaves, the stem, and other parts of it. And this is possible due to that cohesion and adhesion. The water molecules are able to adhere to the internal surface of the plant, and the attraction of water to itself through cohesion allows the water to be pulled upward. You can easily see this by just taking a large a paper towel and putting it in a shallow dish of water standing up and you can watch the water as it moves up the paper towel. So this is going to be how cohesion and adhesion which come from hydrogen bonding and polarity now make another property possible which is capillary action. Water being able to flow through these substances and really importantly even go against gravity using this property. The next property is called surface tension. Um, this is the property that water has and it's its ability to resist external forces. And this is due to cohesion. The water molecules sticking together are gonna create this basically invisible film. And things that are very light can actually sit on top of the water without breaking the hydrogen bonds. And so it's almost like sitting on sort of like a soft table as opposed to falling into water. Now remember, hydrogen bonds are fairly weak bonds, pretty weak bonds. So you and I can't sit on the water, but we see in the picture here a light leaf, these berries placed correctly. They're not breaking that surface tension. This would help living organisms such as certain insects and other organisms that have adapted to not breaking those hydrogen bonds to stand on top of the water or sit on top of the water. Also plants like lily pads that can float on top. Well, not even float because they're sitting on that invisible film that is created by the surface tension. And again, this relates back to cohesion. The water molecules are sticking together, creating this surface. The next property is water's specific heat. So specific heat is a chemistry term and it is the amount of heat needed to be absorbed or lost by a substance before the substance itself changes temperature. So all substances have a specific heat. They have an amount of heat they need to take in or lose before they themselves will have a temperature change. Water specific heat is very high, which means that it takes a large amount of heat to be to change the temperature of water. You can think of this uh, if you go to the beach on a hot day. If you walk barefoot on the sand, you're probably going to burn your feet. But then you put your feet in the water and it cools down because the water is still nice and cool. Both the sand and the water have been exposed to sunlight for the same amount of time. But water needs a lot more heat to change its temperature, while sand, just a little bit, and it starts heating up. So this is really important for living organisms because our planet is mostly water. 
And so this helps keep our planet and the land portions of our planet at livable temperatures. We're taking in a lot of sunlight, taking in that heat, but the water's going to remain cool. Also, that's why climate change, when we measure the temperature changes of oceans, are a really significant indicator because that means we're heating up a lot if the entire average ocean temperature has changed. Places on the coast will tend to be cooler because you have the bodies of water absorbing that heat throughout the day. And so we're just looking at this high specific heat really makes our planet livable and helps cool things down as water is able to take in a lot of that heat without itself getting hot. The next one is heat of vaporization. So this is another heat one, and it's related to specific heat, but it is a different property. This is the amount of energy needed to change liquid water into vapor. So going from a liquid to a gas. Just as water has a very high specific heat, it also has a very high heat of vaporization. It needs to take in a lot of energy before it will convert into uh, it's gas form, it's vapor. Now, that's why they say a watched pot never boils. It takes a lot of heat to get that water bubbling and, and turning into to steam, essentially. The most important or relevant example that I can think of of heat of vaporization is sweating. So we sweat and have water on our skin that's able to absorb high amounts of heat energy before it'll evaporate into the air. By doing this, it leaves the surfaces that it was on cooler than before. So as the water evaporates off, the surface is left at a cooler temperature than it was previously. Now on a hot day when you're sweating a lot, it probably doesn't feel like that sweat is cooling you down, but it is helping you regulate temperature and stay cool. And again, is necessary for our survival. Density is another uh, chemical property that can be applied to all chemical substances. It's a measure of how concentrated the atoms or molecules are within a substance. Solids tend to be denser because their atoms are closer to each other and there's a lot more of them packed in and not moving as freely. Liquids tend to be less dense and they tend to have the atoms moving around each other in more of a fluid motion and not as many in one area. And then of course gases are the least dense because they're able to, the atoms are able to spread out and go all over the place and there's not a high concentration of atoms in one area. So water is very interesting in the fact that it's one of the few substances that's actually more dense as a liquid than as a solid. So most substances, the liquid version is going to be less dense, but that's not the case for water. When water freezes into its solid form, which is ice, there's going to be air getting trapped between hydrogen bonds and actually pushing out the molecules away from each other, making it less concentrated and less dense. This allows ice to float on water which may not seem essential to life, but think of if all the glaciers and ice was melted and in the water and sinking to the bottom, the sea levels, how high they would be, where there would be a lot less land for us to live on. Also, organisms that live on the ice, like our polar bears, they're going to need those ice parts and ice landscapes in order to survive and hunt. They're not living in the water. They need to live on the ice and have access to the water. So this ability for ice to float really does help our entire planet and make life possible for a lot of different organisms. Now, the next property we're going to talk about is being a solvent. So a solvent is any liquid that dissolves what we call a solute. So a solute is going to be the particles that are going to get dissolved within a liquid and the liquid that's doing the dissolving is the solvent. I hope that wasn't confusing. Water is known as the universal solvent and that's because it dissolves the most solutes. This goes back to its polarity. 
by having both positive and negative um, charges on this one molecule, it's able to dissolve multiple things and connect with other positive ions, negative ions, and dissolve those substances. This is really important for uh, digestion for humans and animals, every time that we digest food, there's water involved, breaking those down, dissolving it. The composition of cells with cytoplasm has a lot of watery environment that's going to be dissolving nutrients and things within that. And same with plants. Being this solvent is really important. Even the ocean, we need to dissolve oxygen for the organisms and life in the ocean to have access to that oxygen and that's actually the solute is oxygen which is dissolved in the solvent water so many things can be a solvent but water is the universal solvent and dissolves the most solutes so those are all the properties of water we can tie most of them back to its polarity and hydrogen bonding. And we can see how those chemical properties that water has really gives it these characteristics. And all of these make life on Earth possible. From the cooling of our land ecosystems to being able to move water through plants so that they have the, the water that they need to do photosynthesis, from digestion, from Arctic environments with ice on top to even sweating that helps cool us down. Water is an essential part of biology because without it, there would be no biology. So I hope that by understanding these properties, you have a better appreciation for water and a better understanding of how we use it.